Today we're on the road to Cades Cove in beautiful Tennessee. We're going to show you the wonderful fall colors and some of the historic sites along the way before heading back to our Smoky Mountain cabin in Gatlinburg on this episode of History and Relics. The Great Smoky Mountains are absolutely beautiful this time of year. We're driving through Cades Cove today and we'll be showing you some of the sights and photos we've taken along the way. At the halfway point is the Cable Mill Historic Area where we stop and explore. So take a few minutes, sit back, and enjoy the ride as we journey through this wonderful national trek.
Coming into Cades Cove, you'll see a Methodist church. Now, how do we know that? Well, the Methodist church had two entryways and believed that men and women needed to meet separate, although there was no physical barrier down the middle of the chapel. The Methodist church was established in the 1820s. The congregation first met in a simple log structure that had a small fire pit and a dirt floor. In 1902, the building you see here was constructed in 115 days at the cost of a dollar per day by carpenter and pastor John D. Campbell. It was also commonplace to be buried at or near the church, and so there's a cemetery behind the church that has over a hundred graves and is the second oldest in the cove. The next church you'll see while driving the Cage Cove Loop is the Missionary Baptist Church. Due to a conflict and resulting division at the Primitive Baptist Church, the Missionary Baptist Church was formed in 1841. Early on, congregates often met at each other's homes since the church hadn't been built yet. Political discourse then prevented the congregation from meeting during the Civil War. Following the war, the revival circuit was in full swing and the church experienced solid growth. By 1894, some 50 years after being established, the church was finally able to construct its own building on Hyatt Hill. From there, the membership grew from 40 to over 100 members. As a result, the church needed a larger building and constructed the church that you see here in 1915. And here we are at the Cable Mill Historic Area, which is about at the halfway point on the loop. The majority of the rustic buildings here, including the house, the cantilever barn, and surrounding outbuildings, were moved here from around the region. The National Park Service constructed the blacksmith shop here many years ago. All of these buildings encircled the John P. Cable water wheeled power grist mill, which has been on this original site since around 1870. The land this all sits on was once owned by William Tipton, a veteran of the Revolution who had bought the land through a land grant program from the new state at the time, Tennessee. By the late 1920s, a national park was proposed. A welcoming idea to many, as long as it didn't include Cades Cove. But no one listened to the residents, and the Tennessee General Assembly gave the Park Commission the ability to use eminent domain to seize the land it needed. The townsfolk revolted and took their case to court, but later lost and soon the land was incorporated into the park and open to visitors. One of the interesting buildings here is the cantilever barn. With all the rain the Smokies received during the year, cantilever barns were the answer to save stored crops from spoiling prematurely. The slope roof and overhang funnels the rain away from the stored crops as well as the barn itself. At the same time, open slats in the walls allows air to circulate, which also keeps the stored crops from spoiling. To walk up to the barn, you'll have to cross over the mill race, or flume, that carries water from a nearby mill pond to the grist mill. The Cable Grist Mill was owned by John P. Cable, one of the largest landowners at Cades Cove. He built the grist mill and a sawmill. His son James later inherited the mills and ran them into the early 1900s, until steam power became the rage and could cut wood much faster. The mechanics of the 11 foot tall wheel was designed well and kept simple. The large water wheel that drives the grist mill is an overshot mill, which means that the fast flowing stream strikes the top of the wheel. This functions much better than a wheel driven by water flowing past the bottom of the wheel or via an undershot wheel. As the wheel turns, it drives a runner stone that also turns. There's a very small gap in between the runner stone and stationary stone below. And the corn or grain is fed into this area from a gravity fed hopper. The miller, which was quite skilled at his trade, could position the corn or grain at a certain spot on the stone to achieve the desired fineness of the cut. The stones on the cable grist mill are the original stones and have been used for over 150 years. Well, it's time to get back on the road, and heading out, you'll see some of the other outbuildings that set off into the distance. Soon you're back into the wooded path. Oh, but watch out for deer! 
As we head out, we're going to stop off at a spot where we spotted a waterfall earlier and take some video. This was really cool. we made it back to Gatlinburg and here's where we're staying a beautiful cabin in the mountains centrally located between Gatlinburg and Pigeon Forge this spacious two-story three-bedroom two-bath cabin sleeps eight and is perfect for the entire family including your pets the name of the cabin is a very happy place and is managed by Heartland Rentals their contact information is provided at the bottom of your screen a large cozy front porch greets you upon arriving. Sitting back in the old rocking chair, you can hear the birds chirping, the squirrels rustling around, and way off in the distance you can hear the whistle of an old locomotive going through town. Just inside, you're met with a lovely and welcoming great room, complete with a wood-burning fireplace, comfy furniture to relax on, a TV, and more. Right next to the living room, you have a small dining area, and just outside of that, a sliding glass door that leads you to an enclosed porch off the back of the cabin, complete with a gas grill and jacuzzi. From there is the kitchen, with one of the baths and bedrooms off of it. The kitchen itself has plenty of space, a small table and chairs, and all the amenities of home. Upstairs are the remaining bedrooms and second full bath. After a long day of seeing the sights, it was nice to come back to a place you could truly relax unwind and get a good night's sleep. We had a very good time at the very happy place. The folks at Heartland Rentals were all very nice, very accommodating, and very responsive to our questions and needs. We hope to come back at some point and perhaps for a little longer stay. Thank you all for coming along with us today. We hope you've enjoyed this episode and found it interesting, informative, and fun. We enjoyed Cades Cove, as well as the Gatlinburg and Pigeon Forge areas, and we hope to come back real soon. All right, and before we head out, we want to give a big shout out and thank you to our latest financial contributor and tipster, R.J. Abrams. We really appreciate the support. And until next time, everyone, this one's history. Uh -huh.